le 7 novembre 1918, lorsque le caporal Cléron Pierre player, Corporal Pierre Cellier sonna le premier sounded the initial ceasefire vers 10 heures du matin. at around 10 o'clock in the morning. Bien des hommes ne purent y croire. Many soldiers could not believe it. De leur Then they slowly Pendant left de loin their positions and further away along the front lines, the same bugles repeated the ceasefire and then sounded the last post before the bells spread the news across the entire country. Le 11 novembre 1918, November 11th, 1918, at 11 in the morning, 100 years ago, pour jour, day pour heure, on the day, on the hour, France, in Paris and all around France, the bugles sounded and the bells pealed. Armistice was being announced. This was the end of four long, terrible deaths uh, and fighting. But armistice did not signify peace. And in the East, for many years, devastating wars continued to be fought. Here, on this very day, the French and their allies celebrated their victory. They had fought for their homeland and for their freedom. And for this, they had made huge sacrifices and suffered untold hardships. They had experienced a hell, a hell that no one can imagine. We should take a moment to bring back into our memory all these fighters, French soldiers from the continent and the colonies around the world, fighters from the uh, uh, Legion, foreigners that had come from the whole world, because for them, France symbolized all that was beautiful in the world. Let us summon the ghosts of Peugeot, the first who have fallen, and Trébuchon, the last who died for France 10 minutes before the armistice. We have teacher Clébert Dupuis, defender of Douaumont, Guillaume Apollinaire, Blaise Sandra from the infantry of the Foreign Legion, the uh, soldiers from the regiments of the Basque Country, Brittany or Marseille, the Captain de Gaulle that was unknown at the time, Julien Green, the American with his ambulance, Monterland and Giono, Charles Piggy and Alain Fournier who Joseph all Kessel, fell during the first weeks, Joseph Kessel, who came from Orenburg in Russia, and all the others, all the others qui sont who are our family, nous the family that we belong to today, monument, the names of whom can be read off Corse, each monument from the sun-kissed mountains of Corsica to the valleys of the Alps, from the Salon to the Vosges, from the Pointe du Rat to the Spanish border, one France, rural, urban, bourgeois, aristocratic, working class, where all the colors and the, where the parish priest and the secular suffered side by side and whose pain shaped us during these four years of fighting, Europe nearly committed suicide. Humankind had gone down the sinister path of merciless fighting, the kind of hell that devours all fighters, whatever side they might be on, whatever country they hail from. The day after the armistice, the very next day after the armistice, the sinister task of counting the deaths, the d counting the dead, the wounded, the disfigured, the missing, started. Here in France, but also in all the other belligerent countries, families waited for months on end in vain the return of a father, a brother, a husband, a fiancé, and amongst those that were absent, there were also admirable women who worked alongside the soldiers as volunteers. Ten million dead. Six million wounded. 
de veuves, 3 million widows, 6 million d'orphelins, 6 million orphans, des millions de victimes millions civiles, of civilian victims, 1 milliard d'obus tirés sur le sol de France, shells dropped on France only. Le monde découvre the world discovered the extent of the wounds that combatant fervor had obscured. The tears of the dying were followed by those of the survivors. Because on this very soil in France, the entire world had come to fight. Young men from French provinces, from overseas territories, young men hailing from Africa, the Pacific, the Americas, Asia, came to die far from their families in villages of which they not, did not even know the name. The millions of witnesses from all nations then told of the horrific fighting, the stench of the trenches, the bleakness of the battlefields, the screams of the wounded in the night, the, the destruction wrought on the fields in bloom, which were reduced to a cinder. Many of those who went home, who made it home, had lost their youth, their dreams, their appetite for life. Many went home disfigured, blind, amputated. Victors and vanquished were then plunged for a long time in the same darkness. 1918, that was 100 years ago. It seems very far away, but it was only yesterday. I have seen the countryside where the most terrible battles were fought. And in that countryside, I saw the land still gray and barren from the fighting. I saw villages destroyed with no one left alive to rebuild them, and whose ruins still today attest to the folly of mankind. I saw on our monuments the litany of names of French soldiers alongside the names of foreign soldiers who died under the skies of France. I saw the bodies of our soldiers buried in the fields where nature has reclaimed its rights, just as I had seen in mass graves, side by side, the bones of German and French soldiers who had soldiers who had fought during a vicious winter over a few square yards of soil. The traces of that war never faded, have not faded from French soil. They have not faded from Europe, from the Middle East, nor from our memories, all of us around the world. Let us remember let us not forget, because the remembrance of these sacrifices urges us to be worthy of those that died for us, so that we may live free. Let us remember, let us take away nothing of what was pure, of the ideals of the lofty principles of our elders' patriotism. This vision of France as a generous nation, of France as a project, as France, the bearer of universal values, was displayed during these dark hours as the very opposite of the selfishness of a nation which only looks after its own interests because patriotism is the exact opposite of nationalism. Nationalism is a betrayal of patriotism by saying, our interests first, who cares about the others? We erase what a nation holds dearest, what gives it life, what makes it grace, and what is essential, its moral values. Let us remember, we in France, what Jacques Clemenceau proclaimed on the day of victory 100 years ago to this day before the National Assembly, after which members of the Parliament started chanting the French National Anthem he said, France, fighting for rights and lawfulness, fighting for freedom, France shall always and forever be the soldier defending aspirations. 
Those are the values. Those are the virtues that drove those whom we honor today, those who made the ultimate sacrifice in the battles they fought for their nation and for democracy. These values and virtues made them strong because they guided their hearts. The lesson we draw of the Great War cannot be rancor and resentment against other nations. And it cannot be allowing the past to be forgotten. The Great War is a foundation that obliges us to think forward to the future and think of our essential values. As early as 1918, our predecessors, our forebears, lay the foundations of the first forms of international cooperation. They brought down empires. They recognized many nations. They redrew national borders. They even dreamt at that time of a political Europe. But humiliation the spirit of revenge, the economic and moral crisis of those years fueled the rise of nationalism and totalitarianism. War, once again, 20 years later, destroyed the paths toward peace. Today, here, peoples of the whole world on this sacred esplanade, the tomb of our unknown soldier, this anonymous soldier who symbolizes all those who die for their homeland. See so many of your leaders come together. Each one of them brings with them so many combatants and martyrs of their own nation. Each one of them represents the face of the hope for which an entire young generation uh, agreed to die, the face of a world that is once again peaceful, where friendship between peoples prevails over, uh, over war, a world where the words of men must speak louder than the clamor of arms, where the spirit of conciliation must prevail over the temptation of cynicism, where bodies in fora exist allowing former enemies to come together to dialogue as a pledge of a harmony that at last is possible to achieve. And on our continent, this is represented by the ties of friendship between Germany and France and the desire to build a bedrock of common goals. This hope is called the European Union, a union freely entered into, never before seen in history, a union that has freed us of our civil wars. This uh, face, this hope is called the Organization of the United Nations, which uh, is a guarantee of the spirit of cooperation to defend the common goods of a world that uh, has its uh, uh, fate indefectibly uh, linked and that has drawn the painful lessons of the League of Nations and the Treaty of Versailles. We have the certainty that the worst is never over, that the worst, rather, can be overcome as long as we have men and women of good will to guide us. So unrelentingly, without shame, without fear, let us be those men and women of good will. I know there are old demons which are coming back to the surface. They are ready to wreak chaos and death. There are new ideologies that manipulate religion, that uh, spread obscurantism. History sometimes threatens to take its sinister course once again and compromise, undermine our legacy of peace that we thought we'd forever sealed with the blood of our forebears. 
I wish this day of commemoration to be the day when we renew our eternal pledge to honor our dead. Let us once more pledge as nations to place peace above all else because we know the price, we know the weight, we know the demands. All of us here, political leaders, we must, on this day, 11th of November 2018, reassert to our citizens our true, our huge responsibility, the responsibility of handing down to our children a world such as was dreamt us dreamt of by previous generations. Let us add our hopes together instead of seeing our fears oppose each other. Together, we can thwart the threats of climate warming, of poverty, hunger, sickness, inequalities, ignorance. We have started this struggle. We can win this battle. Let's continue to do so, because victory is possible. Together, we can break with the new betrayal of the intellectuals that feed falsehoods, that breeds falsehoods, that accepts injustices which undermine our citizens, fuel extremist speech and contemporary obscurantism. Together, we can foster an amazing development of science, art, exchange, education, medicine. These are developments that I see happening everywhere around the world. Because if we wish it to be so, our world is at the dawn of a new era, at the dawn of a civilization that gives pride of place to man's ambitions and faculties. And to ruin this hope by giving in to the fascination for withdrawal, isolationism, violence, and domination would be a grave error that future generations would very rightly make us responsible for. Today, here together, let us face the judgment of future generations with dignity. France knows what it owes its soldiers and to the soldiers who came from around the world. It recognizes their greatness. France respectfully and solemnly pays tribute to those from other countries who died for France, those that, in the past, it fought against. Our feet only and in vain rise up from the soil that is a shrine to the dead. These were the words of Guillaume Apollinaire. On these tombs, where they are buried, we want to see arise the certainty that a better world is possible if we so wish it, if we decide it, if we decide to build it, if we want it with our, uh, with our entire soul. Today, on 11th November 2018, 100 years after a massacre, the uh, scars of which are still visible, I thank you for gathering in brotherhood. We hope that you will, uh, this gathering will not last but one day. This brotherhood, this fraternity, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, is an invitation to enter into the only battle that is right, the battle, the struggle for peace, the struggle for a better world. Long live peace amongst peoples and amongst states. Long live the free nations of the world. Long live friendship amongst peoples. Long live France.